thousand feet above the Atlantic Ocean and about to cross over the United Kingdom and cabin crew is about to come around and serve breakfast over here but uh, wanted to uh, get this video started day number two of our epic European mega trip and on our way into Amsterdam in the Netherlands and I uh, tried to get some sleep last night but oh man I don't sleep well on planes and we've had light to moderate turbulence the entire time um, not enough to put on the seatbelt sign but it was enough that it disrupted my sleep I didn't sleep well at all also these seats are very cramped even though there's no one in the middle seat next to me can't stretch my legs out very well and I'm six foot two so uh, not comfortable at all but uh, anyway I think they're coming around with uh, things of food here in just a moment now, this is cool if we look outside it looks like it's still dark out but actually it's not these are super cool windows. I've heard about these. I wish all my windows at home were like this because this is cool. There's no window shade. Check this out. There's a button. Watch this. It takes a minute, but watch. Let's do this. Watch what happens. It takes a minute to do it, but... Is not great because when we took off it was a lot of from the weather there was moisture on the window and now it's ice it's iced over and slowly it's getting lighter it's, look at that how cool is that Pretty cool. When you darken it, it looks black. You can kind of see a little bit out, but it's pretty, pretty dark. A lot better than what my blinds do at home. I'll tell you that. It's really cool. But um, we got about an hour and 17 minutes until landing, and breakfast is here. Let's see what we got. This looks pretty good. I got orange juice. We got fruit, which is amazing. Good. Melon. Maybe pineapple in there. Vanilla yogurt. Ciabatta sandwich. Egg gouda and Dijonese. Okay, let's see how breakfast is. Last night's dinner far exceeded expectations. It was great. And uh, generally on an economy flight, I expect the equivalent of a TV dinner, you know microwavable TV dinner, but it was fantastic. It was like a curry chicken with rice and pumpkin cheesecake was for dessert was amazing. Uh, breakfast seems uh, pretty simplified, but it looks good though. Fruit is very fresh. Very good. Look at that.
it's not a lot of flavor. It's all right. Always gotta have orange juice at breakfast. See, it's uh, still a little bumpy up here <laughs> the whole way. It's been like this. I've seen worse. Okay, it's kind of a trip because it's uh, sunny out right now, but at home in Los Angeles right now it's about 2 in the morning. So we're flying over Ireland right now, about to cross over the UK. You can't see it really. Cloud cover and also the way that was iced over. I'm trying to see what I can. But, uh, we're gonna start our descent. We got just over an hour till landing. I'll film what I can. Hopefully this ice will melt off as we descend. Once we get in the airport, we'll get organized to get our day started. So let's check out landing in Amsterdam.
landing and brought us to Schiphol, Amsterdam. Welcome, well, almost. We still got a long way to drive, so please remain seated. Uh, be careful when you open the luggage bins because hand luggage might fall out. This crew says goodbye to you. Thank you very much for flying KLM and we hope to see you again soon. Now, for a lot of passengers, this is not the end of their journey yet. I wish you a very good flight to your final destination. Bye-bye. minutes ago we left uh, Los Angeles and uh, we are now very close to our parking gate. We'll be getting there nicely on schedule and uh, so I uh, wish you a sweet continuation to your final destination. If you uh, stay in the Netherlands, safe travel home. Thank you for your attention, thank you for choosing KLM tonight and I hope you enjoyed the experience. Right, we made it here we are Amsterdam Airport and uh, first thing I'm gonna do is find a seat and get everything organized post-flight and make sure I've got all my stuff together and then we got to find immigration and get through uh, passport control so that'll be our official entry into the country so fantastic flight big thumbs up uh, the flight crew is spectacular uh, every time they serve me a food or something to try to teach me a word in Dutch <laughs> like orange I can't pronounce any of the words but uh, that was a lot of fun and super friendly crew so big thumbs up and uh, as a matter of fact there they go right there KLM thumbs up good job guys and uh, so anyway let's get uh, let's get our stuff together and figure out what's going on 
You're in Amsterdam. All right, we got our bag sorted, kind of got things put away, and uh, we're ready to go through uh, passport control. So a few things we got to do. We got to have lunch, uh, probably here at the airport, and then there's a lounge I want to check out too. It's a uh, it's a, the NL NS International Lounge. It's the uh, national train for the Netherlands, and they have a train lounge. So I'm going to go check that out. We're going to activate our rail pass as well, and then we're going to get on our first train. Uh, and head over to Harlem where the hotel is. So let's get all that going. First thing we got to do is passport control. Oh, and there's also money. We got to get money. So passport controls first. Let's check it out. What a clever clock, it's life size too. <laughs> Wonder how they made that. I'm sure they didn't have a guy standing in there for 24 hours doing that, right? <laughs> That's unbelievable. I want one of those. That's cool. Okay, from what I can tell, this is the uh, immigration part, so I'll see you on the other side. I'm sure they don't want cameras in there, so got to get through immigration and passport control. Okay, passport control is very easy. You just ask a few basic questions. What's the nature of my visit? How long am I here? What other countries am I going to? And uh, basically a vacation, told a little bit about how I'm getting around, transportation, I'm using trains mostly. And uh, that was it, pretty much. And he stamped my passport here. So I'll show you a shot of the stamp. And that'll get me through, it's called a Schengen area throughout Europe. So all of the countries are, have an agreement where you can travel in between all the countries and you don't have to get a, go through immigration every time. It's called a Schengen area. So I can go all the way through Western Europe without doing another um, immigration uh, passport check. So uh, pretty cool, I like it. And uh, nice and easy going through. I think there's five or six people in front of me. It took maybe five minutes and uh, nice and easy coming into the country. So we're ready to go. Anyway, uh, let's see what's coming up next. I think we're looking for lunch. This is cool, I just flew on one of those. Wonder what's inside, let's check it out. And this is uh, parts of the old galley. And uh, I guess they, this was probably, yeah, this was a coffee maker right here. And there's even brew instructions listed there. Another coffee maker here. And uh, these are probably food warmers, I would imagine, down here. 
I don't know if I can open that or not, but uh, pretty neat how you can come inside and kind of see how everything works on, on an aircraft. Let's check out the cockpit. Cockpits don't look like that anymore, I'll tell you that. <laughs> They're all glass panels now, but uh, wow. I'm hoping they put a little bit more money to preserve it a little bit better. It looks like some of it's worn out, like the seat cushions and stuff. Uh, this is a real piece of history, this, uh, this aircraft cockpit right here. And it's really cool that people can come inside and see it. And uh, it's a little bit of uh, aviation history pre being preserved right here. Look at these old analog uh, instruments. Really cool. I love it. You know, I'm a licensed pilot myself, private pilot, small single engine planes, but uh, you know, I learned how to use a lot of these instruments. Um, you know, there was no glass cockpit in, in the planes that I flew, so uh, it's really neat to see, to see that. And uh, everything's probably transitioning to all glass cockpits eventually, you know, but the older planes still have the analog instruments and it's, and it's good to learn how to use them, so. Really cool that this is here, that you can come inside and check it out for uh, aviation enthusiasts, especially when I just came off a KLM flight, so this is a, this is a very old cockpit, it's really cool. That's a really neat store. And, uh, actual landing gear here too on display massive you can see how big that is all the way up to the ceiling but of course I had to buy a display model of the Boeing 787 that's what I just flew on so uh, this is the part where I get to figure out where in my luggage I'm gonna start putting my souvenirs <laughs> uh, really cool really cool store I really enjoyed that enjoyed my flight on KLM They also have an engine here on display, and uh, you don't want to be standing right where I'm standing when they're starting it up. Okay, I'm having a hard time. I need to get to an ATM to withdraw some cash, some euros. And there's a bunch of ATMs, but they're called TravelX. And you want to be careful what ATM you use because um, if they're not from an official bank, they'll charge exorbitant fees. So I'm looking for an actual bank, and there's one called Avian Amro. And so I'm looking for that ATM. I'm not sure what TravelX is. Um, what kind of fees they charge so I'm just gonna walk around a little bit further and look for this avian AMRO ATM hopefully we'll run into it all right I caved I used the travel X I could not find that other bank called ABN AMRO there's another one called IGN or uh, something like that but I couldn't find either one of those. All I could find are these travel X's all over the place. So I used it, uh, it was four euro charge, which actually wasn't bad. Uh, plus I think my bank charges 3%. So not, not too bad, a few fees, but uh, it's not too exorbitant. So they do offer you a conversion rate where they um, want to convert the um, currency exchange for you. And that's where they do the big markup. All you have to do is decline that and then you get the bank uh, exchange rate that the banks are having, the current market value. So not too bad, four euros is all it costs to withdraw. Um, 
money out of there, so not too bad. Anyway, we're gonna go find some lunch uh, somewhere. We'll see what we run across here. <laughs> Well, here's where I planned on eating lunch, but it looks like they're closed already. Maybe they close between lunch and dinner, or maybe they're only open lunch. I don't know. Anyway, they're not open, so let's find somewhere else to eat, I guess. Right, here we are finally I spent a lot of time looking for that stupid ATM never found it but uh, we got our money out anyway but uh, I'll show you the currency a little later on and be a little bit discreet about it right now but I'll show you what the currency looks like euros not just in um, the Netherlands but most of uh, Europe uses the euro except for Switzerland is the exception they use their own Swiss franc still but um, uh, I'll show you what the euro looks like a little bit later when we're in the hotel room probably but um, our first meal here in Europe uh, not counting the flight of course uh, here at the airport is called a place called Pertuti I wanted to eat at that Grand Cafe but they close early and apparently several of the restaurants close early uh, the other place next door said they were closing at four o'clock too so but this pizza place looks amazing and I got this pizza it's called the Pertuti pizza it's their house specialty look at this it's got uh, looks like pepperoni ham Peppers, olives, this looks amazing. I can't wait to dig into this. So anyway, and a Coca-Cola too. Let's give it a shot. The Pertuti pizza. Oh yeah. It's amazing. How do I, how do, I do this here? This isn't sliced already. I have to do it myself. So they gave me a knife and fork. So, and it's not sliced, so I don't know if this is all over Europe or just at this particular restaurant. This looks amazing, though. All right, this might be one of those cultural differences here in America. You just grab the pizza and eat it with your hand, but uh, here it's not sliced already. They give you a knife and fork, and the people next to me have a pizza, and they're eating it with a knife and fork, so I'm going to do as they do not look like a slob, slobby heathen from America, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's very good pizza. Nothing surprising, it's pizza, but it's very good. Excellent. Fresh ingredients, too. So what an adventure so far. I was really worried on the flight in that I wasn't going to get a good shot of the landing because the window was iced over just as we were coming in. A uh, little bit just at the top of the window. A little space cleared up, and I was able to get some amazing shots of the landing. So, And uh, what a great airport this is. This is uh, fantastic. The ATM situation was a little bit frustrating. I couldn't find. I didn't want to use the Travel X, but it, it worked out worked out it wasn't too expensive so uh, but doing my research beforehand I saw there was an uh, ATM from a bank called ABN Amaro and I couldn't I can't find it it's, it's probably here somewhere but I can't find it so and there's travel X's everywhere so travel X is not a bank it's a currency exchange company so they they're in it for the profit you know for the for the money but it all worked out and uh, anyway we're a little bit behind schedule because of that. Not a big deal. I, I don't have uh, any anything to anywhere to be at a, at a, on, a, on a schedule today. So we just got to get over to the hotel. Uh, but in a moment, we're gonna finish up this pizza, and then there's somewhere close by. There's a lounge. If I can find that, I couldn't find the ATM earlier. Let's see if we can find the lounge, and then we're gonna activate our uh, rail pass. Also, I get a I think I get a free drink in there in the lounge. So if we can find that, we'll check that out. And we'll get our rail pass activated and we'll um, figure out it's going to be a later train than I was expecting. But uh, the trains run every few minutes out of here, so uh, not a big deal. And then we'll head over to Harlem where the hotel is and get checked in and check it out. We'll have dinner a little bit later over there in Harlem. But anyway, I'm going to finish up this pizza because it's great. Oh my God. And 
here's the receipt. 19 euros 65, about 20 bucks. The guy blew his nose, but it was pretty loud. Oh my goodness, it sounded like a horn. Anyway. <laughs> All right, I'm fed, recharged, uh, ready to go. So uh, that was a delicious pizza. By the way, I was looking over at another table that ordered pizza, and they were using their hands. So I don't know, maybe it's just a personal preference thing. But it wasn't sliced, and they gave me a knife and fork. So I figured I'm supposed to use a knife and fork there at, at that restaurant anyway. But uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's probably just personal preference. But delicious pizza. I highly recommend it. If you're coming through Amsterdam, Schiphol, go check out that Pertutti. And uh, by the way, no no big lines, and uh, I saw in the in the news uh, previously that uh, all the uh, immigration, the lines were just like out the building and everything. But of course, it's the slow season; it's after the holidays now and stuff. But uh, smooth sailing. Operations seem really good here at the airport. Anyway, uh, we're going to look for this lounge. It's called NS International Lounge, and I get access with my first class. Eurail uh, train pass. Uh, I paid a little bit more for the first class so that my, the trains will be less crowded where I'm sitting and uh, nicer seats and things like that, more leg room. And because uh, I'm taking a lot of trains on this trip. So let's see if we can find this place, NS International Lounge, and it says I get a free drink in there. I'm imagining it's just soft drinks, but who knows? It could be beer or wine, I don't know. Uh, but it says a free drink, so let's see. This is Arrivals, somewhere around Arrivals 4. Let me see if we can find this place. I'm literally the only person in here at the moment. Nice looking lounge. Look at these nice couches behind here. Pretty cool. You got newspapers over here. Oh, nice reclining chairs. And here's your selection of drinks. All right, you get one free non-alcoholic beverage. Unlimited tea and coffee, though, if you want that. We do have wine and beer for sale as well, but I just grabbed a bottle of Coke. And they have Wi-Fi here and uh, electricity to charge your devices, so be a good time to test my uh, converter. Let's check it out. Okay, so there's the power plug my plug there's the converter you just plug that in here that should just plug in like that and it works it's charging cool nice lounge uh, very very quiet in there it's like a library geez Louise you can hear yourself breathe in there <laughs> I don't like it. play some music or something I don't like it that quiet but anyway uh, yeah that's a nice actually nice escape if you're looking for quiet that's a great place to go so we're heading towards the trains and we're gonna figure out we're gonna figure out uh, what platform to get on and stuff so uh, stay tuned for that.
<laughs> I'm going to Slaughter Dyke, that's where I'm getting off. Track number three. So we just have to find track number three, and we've got about 20 minutes before that train departs. So let's, let's figure out track three. Okay, track three. This rail, this rail station is awesome. Look at this place. And it's cold out here. <laughs> it's very cold. 
Big thunderstorms are coming in tonight too. I got a weather alert, but uh, we got to transfer to the next train. It's uh, going to take us into Harlem. Just about another 10 minute train ride. Let's go figure out where that train's going to going to be. Look at this train station. This is amazing. There's a mess. So I had a problem getting out. My uh, barcode didn't work. There was a gate. I tried to scan my URL barcode and it didn't work. So someone eventually let me out. But I think I'm transferring to a different platform, platform 7, over here. Hopefully I'm going the right way. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out shortly. Another gate, let's see if it scans this time. At least there's an information booth right next to it, so someone should be by shortly to help me if it doesn't work. Let's see if it goes through. Yeah, for some reason my barcode didn't scan again, but a uh, nice guy was there to help me and scan me in so I could get on the train, but heading over to platform seven. exactly why I scheduled uh, 30 minutes between train transfers unforeseen problems like that my, my thing didn't scan I had to find people to let me in and uh, I didn't realize I had to like exit one part of the station and walk down the street to another part of the station and go downstairs and it was kind of an ordeal so um, also I'm looking around on the platform and a lot of stations I was reading online about how there's a I think they call it a train composition uh, chart where you, you'll know exactly where to stand on the platform for, to get on the car that you want. So I have a first class rail pass and so there's one or two cars that are first class and the last the last train it was the very front of it. Um, but um, I can't find the train composition chart. Maybe it, these uh, local commuter trains don't have those so I don't know where to stand on the platform or where the first class car is going to stop. So. Uh, just one of those things have to roll with the punches you know but uh, we're still uh, we're still making up time I've, I've been running behind uh, since it took so long at the airport to get out of there and but we're, we're making up time we should get to the hotel 
pretty shortly. This is another short train ride, about 10 minutes, and then, and then we'll got to walk down the street a little bit to the hotel. It's going to be a very beautiful, uh, very beautiful uh, hotel location. So, uh, train should be rolling in about two minutes. We are in Harlem, made it. Now we just gotta find our hotel.
you look here in Europe, the first floor is the first floor up. As compared to America, the first floor is the ground floor. So when you want the ground floor, press zero. Zero is the ground floor. First floor to go up. <laughs> Wow, what a beautiful station, look at that. We still have, uh, let's call it winter decorations. It seems to be that uh, in, in the Netherlands, a lot of places celebrate the winter season more than just the holidays or Christmas. It's the winter season. And I really like that, I think that's a neat idea. And uh, it's not just December, you know, it's all through the whole winter, so it goes into next month. And uh, anyway, more on that in future videos, but uh, my concern right now is more fair gates and my thing's not going to work. So I don't know how I'm going to get out. <laughs> okay, once again, uh, my code didn't scan and it's, maybe it's because I just activated it today, earlier today, and it takes a while to get through the system. Hopefully it'll work tomorrow. I don't know. But uh, the guy told me uh, just walk behind somebody who's exiting. So that's what I did. So that's how I got out of the station. But uh, when I got on the train, they, they Verify that my uh, pass is valid and everything. Like, today's date is on it and everything. So he just let he just scan me in manually. But uh, anyway, we got here. So a <laughs> little complication there. But maybe it's because I waited till today to activate it. We'll see if it works tomorrow. Anyway, this station is actually quite historic. Uh, some of those buildings up on the station platform are very old and have been preserved and restored. And but looks familiar, I think. If memory recalls, I think this was a filming location, Ocean's Eleven or Ocean's Twelve, one of the Ocean's movies, and I think some other movies too. I have to do more research on that, but uh, Ocean, one of the Ocean's movies. Uh, there was a scene filmed here in Harlem in the Netherlands. Can you believe that? So really cool. Anyway, we're going to head out these doors here, and we're going to find our hotel. We've got to walk a little bit uh, down and uh, check out check out a few sites along the way. Harlem and our hotel is called the uh, Ambassador City Center Hotel. That's where we're going. This is neat. This is a crosswalk, not for cars. For bicycles this is a bike lane there's a bus that goes down here too but uh... <laughs> part of my hair it's been a long couple of travel days but <laughs> this is a trip look at these oh I smell it already the, the pot the marijuana I can smell it in the air I'm right by a, I think I'm right by a coffee shop. Yep, a cannabis shop right to my right here. Anyway, uh, I read somewhere there's, there's more bicycles than people. I don't know if that applies to all of the Netherlands as a whole or just Amsterdam by itself, or, but there's, there's a lot of bicycles. More bicycles than people, isn't that uh, fascinating? So, uh, Anyway, here we are. Look at look at they still have the lights up too. This is fantastic. Okay, if I'm reading the map correctly, I just follow this street straight down until it until it ends at a T intersection, and then I turn left, and then uh, there's a big church. And right behind the church is the hotel. So let's, uh, let's see if my directions are right. Hi, kitty kitty. Oh. Hi, kitty. Hi, little pet. Hi, kitty. Aren't you cold? <laughs> kitty, kitty. 
This is really cool. They still have all the festive uh, season lights, seasonal lights up, which I'm really cool. Look at all these bikes. Look at this. <laughs> a trip. What a, what a neat little part of the world here. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I, I was saying that. I'm glad I get to see all these lights. There's going to be more of that tomorrow. Spoiler alert. All right, our day in Amsterdam. God, it's cold. Cold and windy. Look at this view up here. Wow. Wow. Remarkable as a lot of these streets are pedestrian and bicycle only, no, no vehicle traffic like right here. And it's remarkably quiet. There's no traffic noise, motors honking. You can't hear a freeway in the background. I love it. just beautiful here. Uh, one thing I'm noticing though is a lot of shops here. This is a major kind of a shopping street but everything's uh, closed. It's only 6 30 at night local time and uh, everything's everything's shut. Everything's closed. So apparently early hours around here. It is it's not you know a ma major city like Amsterdam. It's about a 15 minute train ride from Amsterdam. So it's a smaller town. Nice and quiet. I kind of like it here. This is great. But yeah, if, uh, there are night nightlife spots. We're going to check that out in a little bit. But uh, yeah, pretty quiet around here. Small town vibes. I like it. Right, the Ambassador City Center Hotel, right, in, right by this church. Oh my gosh, spectacular. All right, I'm gonna go inside and check in. All right, here we are, we're checked in. We'll get some more uh, shots later on of the lobby downstairs. It's a really beautiful uh, lobby downstairs. Plus I bought breakfast for tomorrow morning, so it'll be easy to find breakfast. I don't have to hunt it down or anything. They got a, buff I think it's a buffet. Uh, tomorrow morning but let's check out the hotel and uh, here we are the what's it called the ambassador city center hotel wait till you see this room too that I that I reserved interesting art there so we're at room 135 so we need to okay we need to go this way then turn left I think that's what it's telling me yes Scan it. 
think you put your card in here that turns on the power oh look at that wow all right here we are we're in the room 135 and my hair is a mess i know it's been a long two days of travel and uh here we are though in the room uh, full length mirror on the other side we've got ooh, shelving very nice nice big bed this looks amazing i'm gonna use that tonight <laughs> Lights, they got power right there. Power on the other side. Beautiful painting there. Look at this light too, wow. Fancy, I've got a nice little table. It's cold in here, I gotta get the heat on. Ooh, a refrigerator. There's a safe. Coffee maker. Looks like there's some tea there. Television, that's my bag. Here's the bathroom. Hello. Towels, very nice. Toilet. We've got these interesting uh, flush mechanics. The small one for number one, the big one for number two. We've got the sink here. Here's your hand and body lotion. Hand and body wash. Interesting. I've got uh, cups. Hair dryer if you need it. Mirror. This is interesting. The floor is all connected, and then there's the uh, a half door here for the shower. Oh, you got one of these uh, one of these type of deals. And then you got hair and body shampoo. Interesting, interesting. It's interesting that there's no door or curtain here. That's fascinating. But the best part of the room, look at this giant window. Watch this. Wow, look at that view. Oh, it's raining. It's raining out. And look at the wind. Oh my gosh. Holy moly. This weather, this weather on this trip has been Brutal. Let me turn the lights off and get a better view in here. Oh, that's much better. Look at that view. Unreal. Wow. I got here just in time. Started raining out there. As much rain as we've seen on my travels here today, the last two days, I've done pretty well to stay pretty dry. I've gotten very lucky. All right, heat is uh, at this radiator. I've never used a radiator before. So this is interesting. Uh, not this kind, anyway. I've got a wall radiator, a gas radiator at home. But uh, this, you just turn this little knob, and uh, you adjust it as necessary. And it's completely silent, but you, uh, the heat's coming out of it. So I'm not sure how that works. It's interesting. But uh, there's your heater. So that's working. All right, very nice room. I'm impressed. Uh, I did take a few minutes and get my stuff together and kind of get organized and uh, clean up a little bit. And then we'll get ready to go out and have dinner and uh, maybe drink or two somewhere. So uh, we'll see you in, uh, in a little while when I'm ready to go back out. So right here in Harlem. What a view from my room. Unbelievable. Anyway, I promised you uh, I'm all cleaned up, ready to go out for dinner. And uh, I promised you, though, first... I was going to show you what the euros look like, the money. And uh, so I went to the ATM there and I pulled out 180 euros. That was the maximum that they listed on there. I could have put other amounts too, but let's take a look at what the euros look like. Okay, so I pulled out 180, so it gave me two 50s and four 20s. And uh, so this is a 50 euro. And I, it shows this bridge thing. I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, if you know, let me know in the comments what below. I'm, sh I'm sure it's uh, significant. It's on the bill. I also don't know what that is. But uh, if you know the significance of these structures, these monuments, and who the people are right there, put it in the comments. I don't know who it is. 
Here's the 20. Is that the same bridge as on the 50? I don't know. It looks very similar. On the back side. So those are euros. One euro right now, um, it was even for a while, but right now it's, uh, I want to say it's about 94 cents, 95 cents, something like that. And if you're watching from Europe and you don't know what a U.S. dollar looks like, I'll show you that too. This is a $20 bill, so that's equivalent to a 20 euro. Alexander Hamilton on there. And I don't have any 5 euros, but this is a 5 euro bill. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, here's the back too. The White House. It's the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. And the $1 bill, George Washington. I think, I don't have any coins yet, but I think there are no $1 bills, $1 euro bills. They're coins, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm sure I'll see some of those before I'm done. But uh, anyway, uh, these are all going to be in my wallet and uh, for spending money. And I think where I'm going out for dinner is cash only, from what I understand. So uh, there you have it. Uh, there's some euros, $180 worth of euros. And just as a side note, uh, I've got this radiator cranked all the way up, as high as it goes. And it's helping a lot, but it's still chilly in here. And uh, I guess it's fine when, when you're sleeping for it to be a little bit chilly. But uh, yeah, uh, it is what it is, I guess. But uh, it's, it is very, very cold outside. But uh, anyway, better than nothing, I guess. I've, I've stayed in rooms in Japan where they'd had no heating at all, and it was... That was miserable. Uh, I wouldn't stay at those places again. But anyway, we're ready to go out for dinner. So let's, uh, I, th I think this restaurant I've got in mind is a local place. Uh, should have some local uh, uh, dishes and uh, local cuisine. So I'm looking forward to that. Let's check it out. Let's head out for dinner. Name of this street is Warmestrat. I think that's how you say it. Warmestrat. It sure doesn't feel very Warmestrat. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, I should be right up here. Hey, hello. <laughs> hello. All right. I, I apologize. I'm going to butcher this name. Uh, Jacobus. Peak. <laughs> I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Is it Yakobus or is it Jacobus or something else? Is it Piek? P A? Peak? Peck? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you speak Dutch. Anyway, we're going to be going inside here, uh, recommended by Rick Steves in my guidebook, and uh, apparently a very popular local place to eat. So let's go inside and have some have some dinner, Dutch style here in Harlem, Netherlands. This is awesome. Okay, here we are. We made it in. They had a table right away. Yeah, well, it looks pretty crowded in here. It looks like a popular place. And uh, let's take a look at the menu here. Okay, we're here at this guy's restaurant. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but... <laughs> Come highly recommended in this guidebook, Best of Europe by Rick Steves. And I started off with a very European drink, an Aperol Spritz. And uh, let's give it a try. Oh, that's very good. Oh, I like that. 
and uh, it's got orange in there. I forget all the ingredients in there, but. And then recommended in this book is the Oriental salad. So I went ahead and ordered that. Should have read what's in the all, what's in it, I guess. But uh, so that's going to be a starter. And then the main dish he recommended the pasta. So I got a, a pasta dish, and uh, we'll see about dessert. I haven't decided on dessert yet. So I'll show you everything as it comes out. All right, this salad looks amazing. It's got, I don't know what that is. It looks like a tortilla. It's not a chip. It's not tortilla. I don't know what it is, but it's very tasty. Looks like it has a steak in it. Wow. Wow. And it's got, looks like uh, some bean sprouts, nuts, cucumber. This looks absolutely amazing. All right, I gotta get a little bit of everything on here. There we go. This looks, this looks great. What a treat. All right, here we go. I didn't get, I didn't get enough stuff. All right, let's see how that goes. Mm. Oh, that is good. I'm not sure what the dressing is, but it's very, very good. Kind of a take on a Chinese chicken salad, but it's steak on there. I don't know what, what these um, crisps are, these things, but it's very good. Cucumber. Mixed greens. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Bean sprouts. What is that, cashews, I think, on there? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I have to put on my glasses for this one. I know I'm getting old. Okay, looks like another like a mixed green salad. Tomatoes, onions, uh, lettuce, mixed greens. Another little salad that comes with the pasta. Even though I already had a starter salad. And look at this pasta. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's, you should smell it. I can't wait to dig into this. Oh, it smells amazing. Let's we'll start with the salad. They've got Thousand Island on there. It tastes like it's house made Thousand. It's very good. I think it's house made Thousand Island. Mixed greens, tomatoes. Normally I don't like Thousand Island, but this one is, it, it's gotta be house made. It's, it's wonderful. And it's not too thick, it's lightly dressed perfectly. Dressing makes it. All right, time for this pasta. I can't. This smells so good. Cheese all over it. I'm not sure what's in it. Is that beef? Let's get some of that cheese on there. Oh, look at that. All right, here we go. Oh my god. 
It's almost like some sort of pulled beef. It's very, very tender, mixed in with the sauce and tossed. It's not chunky at all. It's, it just blends right in with the sauce. It's, that is amazing. Wow. He asked him uh, if he would pick the steak over the pasta, or which one he would pick, and he recommended the pasta. The steak was more expensive, which is interesting, but he went with the pasta. Actually, it's the exact same price because I ordered the menu combo. It's called a menu in Europe. In America, you ask for the menu, you get the list of food. That's the menu. Go to Europe, you ask for a menu, it's a combo. You're ordering a combo. A starter, a main course, and a dessert, usually, typically. They call it a menu. Which is what I ordered. I ordered the menu. So I got to pick one starter, one main course, and one dessert after. I haven't picked the dessert yet. But... Um, he was right on with this pasta. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not even in Italy yet. This is great. <laughs> one of the one of the things I'm most looking forward to on this trip is the food, especially the pasta in Italy. But even here in the Netherlands, it's amazing. This is a really great restaurant. Okay, the orange triple. This looks very interesting. With chocolate, there's chocolate in there at the bottom. Turn that around so you can see that. Looks like it has uh, orange uh, peel on there on top too. Orange zest. Slightly toasted on the cream. Very light. Wow. That is amazing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's one of the most amazing desserts I've ever had. Wow. Is, is the chocolate and the cream and then the chocolate, I'm sorry, the orange and the cream. And on the back end, the chocolate hits you like 10 seconds later. It's amazing. Oh my goodness. That's one of the most amazing things I've ever had. Wow. Mm. God, that's good. Oh. Orange and the chocolate just goes so well together. Wow. Wow, what a 
I even begin, that was one of the most amazing meals I've ever had. So uh, started off with the Aperol Spritz, which is a, a, an amazing drink. You can get that all over Europe. But then I started off with the, uh, the Oriental Peak Salad, which was amazing. She's waving at me. <laughs> and uh, their version of a Chinese chicken salad, except instead of chicken, it had grilled steak on it, which was amazing. And I'm not sure what the crisps were on it, but those, they, they weren't tortillas something uh, different but uh real and the dressing was just perfect amazing and then uh but you know it's kind of like a chinese chicken salad i've had that before then you move on to that pasta and it wasn't just you know ground beef uh with made with ragu or something it was like the most tender uh beef you've ever had imagine if you ever had a really good pulled pork that just melts in your mouth or or, or a really good like brisket that just melts in your mouth it was like that but it was mixed in with their, you could tell the, the tomato sauce was, or whatever sauce they had, was house made. It was just, it was just perfect. It was wonderful. And then to top that off, and that was one of the best pastas I ever had. And then it got even better with that, with that orange trifle dessert. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. So that light, fluffy, kind of almost like a creme brulee and uh, lightly toasted with the orange uh, zest on top. And underneath had the chocolate and, the, and the, the orange hits you in the front and the chocolate hits you in the back. And it's just like, wow, <laughs> that was great. So it just, from the first course, it just kept getting better and better and better. And dessert was one of the most amazing things I've ever had in my life. Fantastic. Thumbs up. One of the best in Europe, indeed. Uh, recommended in the Rick Steves guidebook. Fantastic. If you come to Harlem, You've got to come and eat here. It is amazing. Fantastic. Wow. I'll remember that for a long, long, long time. <laughs> that was amazing. Excellent service as well. People in there. Everybody here in the Netherlands has been super friendly. Really nice people here. Really love it. So anyway, uh, I want to see if we can grab a drink. I do have to get to bed uh, relatively soon because uh, i got to get up or super early. We've got a, a long day tomorrow too. So... Uh, but let's see if we can grab one more drink somewhere and see if something's open. Uh, right on the other side of the church, I think there's a place called the uh, Cafe Studio. Let's see if it's open for a drink. All right, I found the Cafe Studio, but it's, it's closed up already. It's locked up, so they're done for the night. Uh, there's another place around here somewhere I'm going to look for. But uh, kind of not expecting anything to be open at this point, so, uh, but we'll see. All right, I had a great time in in Den Weaver, I think that's how you say it, but uh, fascinating conversation with the bartender, a really cool guy, and he's Dutch through and through, and he's lived in Harlem for a long time, and very well known around the community here, and he was telling me his concerns about how tourism is affecting the culture, the Dutch culture around Harlem, and he has a lot of concerns about that, and uh, understand, it's very understandable how uh, over-tourism can uh, affect uh, local communities. Uh, and, cult, and cult, local cultures and things like that. So, uh, of course, I, I'd like to see all of that preserved. I, I am loving the Dutch culture here. Everyone I've met has been wonderful. And uh, that's why I came here, to experience it. And I came in January at the lowest tourist season to be away from all the tourism. Even though I'm a tourist myself, I want to be away from all the other tourists and ex get more of the cultural experience. So it was really nice talking to him and uh, hearing, hearing his opinions about things like that. And, uh, and uh, he took some great photos of me in the bar. What a great bar that is in there and some really good beer. So really good beers in there. So lots of fun. Anyway, uh, it's getting late. I do have to get back to the hotel and uh, get some sleep pretty soon. But there is one more place I wanna see. I don't know if they're gonna be open or not. I might jump over real quick and see if Jopenkirk is open. Uh, that was an old church uh, that was that's been converted into a brewery. I'm not sure what their hours are. Um, that's where I was going to have lunch. Uh, originally, my first flight was going to get here um, in the morning, 
and uh, they rescheduled the flight for later, so the open Kirk had to be uh, kind of fell off the itinerary. But uh, uh, if I can swing by there for a beer, let's see, uh, let's see if they're open real quick. But after, right after that, I got to get back and get some sleep because we got a long day tomorrow. But uh, this was a lot of fun, a really great experience in there. cool is this place? Wow. I'd love to go upstairs. I think it's a restaurant up there. It doesn't look like it's open right now, just the downstairs. But uh, recommended in the guidebook as well is this called a Hoppin' Beer. It's made from a recipe made in 1501, which is amazing. So let's go ahead and pour this beer. I know it's late and I gotta get to bed, but I was just too close to this place to not come by and give it a try. And I wanted to try this beer. Uh, hoppin' beer, I would expect it's hoppy in flavor. So uh, we'll find out in a minute, let the, the bubbles die down a little bit. But they've got uh, a lot of different beers and they're very well known, the Open Brewery. And they brew beer right here in a former church. A lot of history in this church too. It's really interesting. Really fascinating. Gross. Here we go. 1501. A little bit bitter, almost like an IPA, but not quite. Uh, it's actually good. It's actually pretty smooth. A little bitter up front, but then it smooths out really nicely. It's actually really good. tell you before coming here I knew next to nothing about the Netherlands or Dutch culture but I really 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 like the Netherlands this is uh, everyone's so friendly and nice and uh, fascinating culture it's just fascinating everything from the bicycles to the architecture to uh, the brewery here and, uh, Everyone's so tall. <laughs> it's true. And, uh, and good looking. Everyone looks beautiful. But uh, really cool. I love it here. This will definitely be on my list uh, of return cities when I come back to Europe someday. So, uh, fantastic. Prost. All right, you open Kirk, that place is happening. That's pretty cool. Uh, as quiet as it is around here, uh, it's small town vibes and everything kind of closes early. But there's some places open late. Uh, I think they're open till midnight. Keep in mind, it's a Wednesday night in the middle of January and it's a rainy day. And they're still open till midnight, so that's not bad in a small town, you know. There's a couple of places open later. Uh, most everything closes down pretty early, though. But uh, I guess I guess uh, that's what you can expect in a smaller town. We're in Harlem. Uh, I suppose if you're going to Amsterdam, there's going to be more places uh, open later. And uh, 
it's just a 15 minute train ride away so we're gonna be checking that out tomorrow uh, in the next video we'll be seeing Amsterdam so anyway uh, as I'm leaving places I'm always have to triple check because usually at home I'm like keys wallet phone well, I don't have keys well I have keys in my bag but I don't have them on me uh, my phone is uh, in my hand my wallet is in my jacket it's not my in my uh, I have nothing on my outer pockets to avoid pickpockets so um, it feels it feels weird I have to check different places for my stuff so I'm holding my phone my wallet's actually on my inside pocket of my jacket and then I have to think about where's my passport my passport's in my money belt that I'm wearing under my clothes so uh, it's, it's kind of a different I have to triple check that I have everything when I leave and uh, plus my backpack that I'm carrying so kind of have to make sure I'm not forgetting anything uh, but anyway we're gonna head back to the hotel and on the way in I'll give you a quick tour of the lobby before we go up back up to the room and end the video so let's go back to the what's it called the ambassador City Center Hotel, right by the church. Church view room, unbelievable. Okay, it's almost time to end this video, but first on the way up to the room, let's stop by the uh, lobby and I'll show you uh, some interesting things that are around there. By the way, next door, they have a restaurant it's called The Governor. Uh, so I'm going to have breakfast there tomorrow morning. So you'll see a little bit of that, but uh, right now let's check out the lobby of the ambassador. It's so right inside the front door. They have this cart with these, who knows what that was for, milk or beer or Dutch gin? Who knows? Would that be, would that be, would that be transported with horses? I don't know. And then uh, they've got these brochures. I actually grabbed a couple of those uh, brochures because uh, that's something I'm doing tomorrow. Anyway, going through the front doors, you can see a little bit of the restaurant next door here. Some interesting art pieces, some more of those containers. Sure, what's down this way? I haven't gone down here. They got some art. What is that Madonna? I'm just kidding. I don't know who that is. Stanley cameo. Just kidding. Looks like there's a uh, toilets down this way. And then here we have the elevator. So here's the brochures I grabbed. This is a map of Amsterdam. Spoiler alert, the next video is going to be in Amsterdam. We have a full scheduled day tomorrow in Amsterdam. So I grabbed a little map of that. And the finale of tomorrow in Amsterdam is going to be the Light Festival. And uh, that goes through, looks like January 22nd. And we're going to be doing a canal cruise. I think I scheduled an open boat tour. And the tour is for the Light Festival. Now, in case of bad weather, I think they will uh, substitute a covered boat. Uh, but I've scheduled an open boat to get better camera views and things like that out the windows. Uh, but those are the brochures I grabbed. And the guy in the reception did confirm with me that uh, those, those large uh, jugs, those containers on the cart, those are indeed uh, for milk. And uh, back in the day, they would use those, transport those to make the milk into cheese and uh, other dairy products as well. 
So that, that's pretty fascinating. I guess the owner of the hotel loves to collect uh, memorabilia like that, old uh, antique uh, uh, market stuff that they would use. They would use right here, at uh, right around the church. They had different areas, he was telling me. One area would be for vegetables, one area would be for dairy, one area would be for seafood. And uh, all around the church here, and in the, they call it the Grota Markt, the uh, Great Market. Uh, right outside is a big plaza area that we walked through earlier. So uh, really fascinating stuff right around this church, lots of history. And I love it. And I'm just What a spectacular day today. Wow. Unbelievable. Anyway, before we wind up this video, I got to show, share with you what everything cost. The flight. Um, it's a multi-city trip. So from Los Angeles to Amsterdam. And then on my return trip is going to be from Paris back to Los Angeles. Uh, the normal price was $925.47. However, for me, it was free. Thanks to credit card rewards points, I used the Chase uh, Sapphire Reserve card. And I got, when I signed up, I got a whole bunch of bon sign up bonus points that paid for that flight. And the hotel here, uh, normal price was $230.80. That's for two nights. So $115 a night, basically. But for me, it was free thanks to the uh, the same credit card rewards points. Spoiler alert, most of my hotels on this whole trip are free and the flight too. But I just want to tell you, if you're going to pay for the, the the hotel and the flights and stuff, what it costs. So $230 per night, for two nights, I'm sorry. And the flight was 900 and, what did I say? 925, something like that. Anyway, uh, so that's what things cost to do this trip. This hotel is fantastic and I highly recommend it. So, uh, really good. So, tomorrow we got a very busy day. We're going to Amsterdam tomorrow, and uh, there I am in the reflection. This view is spectacular. It's just a reflection right now because I got the lights on, but once I turn the lights off, what a view of the church out there! Wow, unbelievable. So, anyway, what a spectacular day! Uh, Netherlands, wow, you guys are so impressed. With this country i knew almost nothing about uh the netherlands and dutch culture until i started planning this trip and boy am i impressed wow I, this is a must do country if you're going to travel to europe come to the netherlands specifically harlem unbelievable wow beautiful and uh really enjoying my time amsterdam tomorrow we got a full day ahead of tomorrow so i gotta hit the hay here get some sleep and uh I'm going to wrap up this video now. So there's just uh, one more thing to say. Get out there and explore your world. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.